morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Ben Weeks. I'm the CTO of Request Tech. And this is my business partner, Marek, head of business development. Over the past 12 months, we found our customers increasingly more interested in collaboration, where video, which is a very important part, is just one of the elements that make up an online meeting experience. 2014 has very much been about WebRTC combined with collaboration technologies, such as document and screen sharing, to be useful to drive efficiencies and, more importantly, to drive revenues. Tonight, we're going to demo the ease of which people can enter into a request tech meeting on web and mobile as part of a business process and the sort of experience that users can expect to find once inside. So typically, used as a sent a fast track link. This could be in an email, as we have on the screen over there. The service provider would obtain the link via an API, and they can send it out in an email or embed it in a website such as online banking. When the user clicks the email, a second level of authentication is possible using things like SAML2 um, or Kerberos or um, single sign-on techniques, which we tend to find are different to every sort of enterprise bank, and we usually have to work with them to um, fit into their, into their current authentication mechanisms. So Marek's going to click the link um, on the Chrome web browser over there. And the important point here is, is that you can click this link on any, on any device, and it doesn't matter which browser it opens up in. And the same is true if it opens up on a mobile or tablet device, as we'll show you. OK. So first of all, we're going through the tech check process, which is to make sure that the user has sufficient bandwidth, that his camera's working, his microphone's working, and that he can, his speakers are working. So all of these things. Got some echo. Awesome. All of these things are checked before going into the meeting room to ensure that he has a good experience, there's no complaints, and there's no bad feedback to the bank or hospital or enterprise that are running these online meetings. And as we start to move the real world over to this type of interaction with enterprises, it's very important that we don't get any negative feedback, because quite often by the time we get the feedback, it's too late. So now on this side, um, we're going to enter somebody else into the meeting room as well. When are you going to join mobile next? OK. So let me quickly talk you through the meeting room. On the left, we've got an attendees list, the people that are in there, where there are some moderation controls, such as muting people, um, turning their camera off or their microphone off if they were producing noise. In the middle is a collaboration area where you can share pictures, um, PowerPoint presentations, and even draw on top of those in real time. And on the right-hand side, we have the video area, which um, can be used for conferencing, and below that is the IM. If you were to enter into this on Internet Explorer or Safari, the video area would be handled in Flash using RTMFP, which is a, a low-latency UDP protocol, which is equally as secure as WebRTC, 128. Um, bytes of security, and um, it uses H.264, so a very good quality modern-day codec. And the important thing here is that people um, don't have to install any plugins. The enterprise doesn't have to support the plugin, and uh, most people wouldn't really care whether it was Flash or WebRTC. The important thing is one click, and you're in. If you were to, open, if you were to click the link on a mobile device, and your app was already installed, the app would take you into the meeting room. Or if not, it would take you to the app store where you could download it and then proceed into the meeting room, much as if you'd been on Internet Explorer or Chrome. So it really is a seamless, one-click entrance into the meeting room area. OK. So to handle all of this quite nicely and scalably, there's a few different uh, conferencing scenarios. The media can go peer-to-peer or where it needs to be transcoded between VP8 and H.264. That can happen on a single stream basis um, before forwarding it. Or if the device um, prefers to have a composite stream, and the same is used for recording, then our conferencing MCU engine will combine that into a single stream and send that to the device as appropriate. And we're able to switch between these different types of conferencing mode depending on the number of people in the room and their uh, bandwidth characteristics. So 
Next Maric will choose a few different things from the library that we can share in the content collaboration area. The next one was adding the flash user. Okay. Do you want me to add the flash user? Yep, sorry. Before we do that, we're going to add somebody from Flash so you can see that the quality is just comparable uh, with WebRTC and it's using H264 such that in the future, if, if there was a need to go between WebRTC with H264 and Chrome, using the encoder which is built into Flash as a possibility for scalable um, video calling. So now we have four users in the meeting room. The meeting room can be laid out in a number of different ways in the video area. Um, it can be controlled by the person who's actively speaking, or the moderator can choose to promote somebody. In this current view here, a grid mechanism, everyone's got equal priority. But there are different layouts which we can choose from here, such as focus, where one person occupies more screen than the rest, um, as you can see there. And the person in the big window can be automatically promoted by voice or uh, controlled by the, by the moderator for the session. So now we'll share some things from the library. So you can access a uh, media library here, which can be per, per meeting or per agent in terms of pre-provisioning content into that library. First of all, we're going to share a PowerPoint. Important thing to note here is that PowerPoints are pure HTML5 and they retain their transitions. So it's very much like sharing a PowerPoint normally in, in a presentation. And that works in all web browsers, including iOS and Android. And that, that's the uh, keynote that I gave earlier in the PowerPoint there. Can you show a video now, please? Oh, yeah, we're actually going to start recording the session now. And later on, I'll talk about recording quickly. But there's different recording modes where you can record just the voice, just the video area, or the entire web browser as you see it. And we've started recording now, so we'll be able to quickly show you the live recording at the end. And this is being written in real time um, to the disk as an MP4. So now we're going to play out a video in the video window, which is quite useful for tablet devices, which might not have as much screen real estate, and we want to see it there. This is the SEALs in San Francisco when I was there for the last conference. And this is actually sending the video down the same WebRTC channels that have already been established. So we're not creating any new, any new channels. The video conferencing mixer is able to change between sending down somebody else's video with a video from the server. So in terms of the device having to do things like reconnecting or understand any messages, that's all taken away. And it's a very seamless transition from one video source to another. Um, there's instant messaging, which we can share amongst people as well. Can we show the recording now? Yeah, so that recording that we started, we're now going to stop the recording by the moderator. And it's possible when writing recordings to write those with a public encryption key such that we wouldn't be able to watch them back if we wanted. And the person, the service provider, could download them, and only them with their private key would be able to decrypt those. You can see here under the Recordings tab, the recordings have appeared. Um, a thumbnail is generated of, of the meeting, and Marek can choose to replay um, that recording that we've just made in the video window, as you can see. Um, so we're running out of time now, and perhaps the last thing, which is, for me is the best development of, in WebRTC in the last few months, is the ability for, to do good quality screen sharing, which is fit for purpose. In the past, screen sharing in WebRTC has been a bit fuzzy, phasing in and out. But by tweaking a few things, such as the leaky bucket and the quantization of the codex, you can actually achieve um, very good quality screen sharing. And um, again, that goes down the same stream that has already been established for the video, so the devices are able to quickly receive it, as Marek's showing you here on the iPad in the middle. And that really is very good quality. And that allows your agent advisor in a bank to show their desktop. They might have a PowerPoint prepared of your investment strategy, and you can look at it with them in real time while still seeing the video of the agent as a thumbnail in the top corner. And that proves to be a very, very um, good way of interacting with your customers from the comfort of their own home to the point that they're more likely to um, enter into, into new ideas and new um, investment propositions, as has been proven recently by some of our customers in Europe. Um, that actually brings me to the end of the uh, demonstration, just in time. And I hope you enjoyed it. And if you'd like to see more, then we're just over there and look forward to talking to you. Thank you very much.